Okay, class, today I'm going to show you um, a pap smear tray setup, even though it is on the table. I'm just going to give you information on the equipment needed for what we usually need, the basics for a pap smear when we are assisting the provider. I'm going to go through and explain tell you what each piece of equipment is and then we'll explain what, how we use and what they're for, used for. So if you can tell we have two gloves here, one set is for the MA and we have three gloves here and three are for the provider. We have an old PAP kit which still some providers use who are old school. We have a new thin prep which the newer doctors will be using for PAP smears. We have a sterile tip applicator we have a vaginal speculum. We have three occult tests. Occult tests are for hidden blood in the stool. And we have the developer. We also have a specimen cup that we will collect a urine sample in. We have three obstetrical wipes that we will direct the patient to use. We have a huge cotton tip applicator that we refer to as a pom-pom. We have a vaginal spatula, or a cytology spatula. We have a cytology brush and a cytology broom. Now when we do a pap smear, the reason the pap smears are being done is we are looking for cancer cells in the cervix. So when we use all this, in, um, all this equipment, it's to diagnose specifically for that. So why we have two gloves, two gloves are for the MA to use as she is assisting the provider. The three gloves are for the provider because the provider will use two gloves on one hand and one on the other. Two gloves will be used when he does a rectal exam for the patient and patients usually get the rectal exams some doctors are 35 years and above, some are 40 above, some are 45 above. It just depends on your OBGYN. Once the rectal exam is done, he will peel off that glove to continue with whatever process in, the, in this pap smear um, he has not completed or she has not completed, the provider has not completed. The vaginal speculum is used to open up the vaginal canal so the doctor can visualize the cervix. He has to be able to see in order to perform the test, or she has to be able to see. Doctors will use either the cotton tip applicator or the pom-pom to remove excess vaginal discharge that may be in there to allow better visualization of the cervix. Now on this old school prep, pep, pap prep, we used to use our cytology brush, or not cytology spatula. And how would we do that is we would smear our cells on our slide from the spatula and the brush. Once that is done, we would use a fixative, which is a glue like hairspray, to hold those cells attached to the slide in order for it to be sent to the lab. What we were finding out is some of those cells would not adhere properly or would get scraped off because there was not enough fixative. So we were getting erroneous results. So right now, we use the thin prep. It is liquid based, if you could see that, and the cells from the cervix float in there and they don't get destroyed and they don't get lost. Um, and they don't get stuck to each other. They're free floating. So this allows for us to get better results and not so many false positives or false negatives. It allows for a better diagnosis. The vagal, the cytology spatula is used to collect cells from the cervical os, which is that little hole on the cervix. What they will do is stick the spatula in there and scrape some cells and stick it in the free floating cytology solution. Then they will take, just let me go ahead and demo that for you. They'll stick it in there and leave it sit there for just a second. They'll do the same procedure with the cytology brush, going in to the os, collecting cells, and sticking it in the solution. 
We have one other technique, and this is called the cytology broom, and it allows for a bigger collection of cervical cells. We stick all these in the solution, swoosh them around, scrape them, bounce them to get as many cells off as, that, as we can. I like to take my spatula and scrape the cells off of my cytology brush to make sure I get as many cells as possible. Once I am done with that, I will close my thing, my jar, and it'll be sent off to the lab. We also have the occult blood test that we do. This is the rectal exam test. What we are looking for is hidden blood in the stool, which is a precursor for colon cancer. If we get a positive on one, which this is the one we do in the office, we will send two home with the patients to do in the next two days to bring back to the office to read for test results. We use a developer, and the way we use this is when the doctor is doing the test on the patient, you have two little windows right there, and you have, they're visible from both sides. On the bottom of the side where we're doing the testing, we have a control, a positive and a negative. This allows us to visualize what color it would change. Some of them turn green, some of them turn a dark brown. We will place the two drops on there, or a drop on the positive and the negative. And as you can see, the dot has changed colors. The provider will then, when he's doing the rectal exam, will smear some stool on the AB window. We will in turn close that window, turn it around, and place one drop on one window, one drop on another window. If either of those drops turn the same color as that dot, we have a positive reaction. We will then send the other two tests home with the patient. If it comes back negative, we don't have to send the other two. Now, there is one thing that I did forget at the beginning of this um, video, is we have to make sure that we are having our patients relieve their bladder. We do not want to try to use the vaginal speculum to open up the va vagina and push on the bladder if they have not relieved the, the bladder. So make sure you get a urinalysis sample because it will not only uh, relieve the bladder, but we will definitely be doing other tests like a urinalysis and possibly a urine pregnancy test or a urine culture. So we definitely would need to get the urine sample anyway. So as the patient is coming in before you have them get undressed, get that urine sample. Also, you wanna make sure that you're providing them with the three obstetrical wipes. They have to make sure that they are correctly cleaning themselves. You have to make sure that they're cleaning on one side of the labia majora, one side on the other side of the labia majora, and one right down the center of the vagina to make sure that we are getting as much um, bacteria off as we can so that this um, testing will be as accurate as possible.